This man, Solomon Dalong, Minister of Youth and Sports, during the time of uh, Muhammadu Buhari. But now, I know why I like this man. I know why I like him. He, if I, he is the only person, eh, if I'm correct, now be the only person we work with the last government, Buhari. We come out. Talk and say, our government was a failure. Now him talk and. No other person. He boldly a government that he is part of. Oh, who reabo want that? Yes, so we were a failure. We failed the Nigerian people. All the promises that we made, we failed. We did not achieve one thing. Oh yes, we failed. Uh huh. He talk him. I be not talk him. He talk him now. For the video, what we want play for now? When I go still see him, he repeat him for there. Uh huh. And even in boss, Buhari come out. He say, we are sorry. We failed. <laughs> now, him follow. He follow this protest now. This end bad government in Nigeria. Um, this guy, they forefront too. This man, they forefront. You know what now? We think Kake and Barrett. Hey, hey, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Chief, oh, yeah. This guy, he don't come. He don't talk and say, Oh, when he, now me, they lead the Northern Force. <laughs> So when you hear the North is protesting, now like this guy the leader, the Northern Force, <laughs> they are all queuing behind me. We must end bad government in Nigeria. When I want to say, take go down. Okay? When I want to see why I say I like this guy, the guy captured everything. He talked about the, the this this terrible government. Talked about the Buhari government. He can't even tell us say there are two, both Tinubu and Buhari. Now Siemens are the Siemens twins that cannot be separated. Now this guy even make us understand now, say, Tinubu, now in third term as president, now be this. Because during the two term, Buhari served, Tinubu was also president. Oh yes! You go here for the video. All their policies, all their, it was fused to, the both of them were the president as at that time. Okay, you know, no. So whenever these people come out to tell you that, eh, hey, uh, they did not leave anything for them, that the last administration was a flop, that they gave them empty treasure. Now lie! Now, two of them looted the treasury. <laughs> he was part of the government. People that worked in that government, now Buhari, now Tinubu, bring them. Ministers, special advice, even the, our vice president, now Tinubu, bring them. He was, he was, was co-president with uh, Buhari. Make a lot of too much. May I give you a Solomon Dalong, so that when I go understand what this guy thought. This guy, my brother, I doff my cap for you. Yes. And for the first say, now you the lead not enforce for this protest. Forget it. We go achieve our aim. Make gonna help me listen to this man. Then come to the conversation and tell me if what he said not the truth. Eh, not the truth. <laughs> not the truth or not the lie. <laughs> and they wait for honor for conversation. I'm gonna give on a Solomon Dalong. Watch. The Nigerian people have not pretended that there are existential issues affecting their well-being as citizens and uh, they've seen that there is no attempt from uh, established institutions to be able to address these issues and uh, the national assembly the voices that tried to echo their grievances were silenced the traditional institutions have been on paying of homages to the villa. The religious clerics are also on pilgrimage to Asoro. So the people are frustrated and they have decided to join the elementary school of learning the language to speak with the government. They are now graduates of the appropriate language of communication which the government can understand, which is protest. So I am motivated by the commitment of our people to seek peaceful redress from their government that is the motivation so when we we've spoken with a couple of ministers a couple of people in government as a matter of fact we spoke earlier today with the minister of state for health and one of the things he's constantly mentioned is that uh, paraphrasing what he said nigeria has been living a fake life more like the government has been subsidizing fuel, forex, electricity, and all whatnot. And so the Tinubu administration is coming to reset 
uh, this. And it's going to take a bit of time for uh, that to kick in. The Nigerians should give them the benefit of doubt and allow them some time for this to kick in. Is that a strong proposition that you think should be considered by the Nigerian people or a false flat on the surface? An average Nigerian is more informed about this government rhetorics. The Tinubu administration and his ministers are completely disconnected from the people. Most of them, since their appointments, uh, have never even had any good link with the people to understand the devastating impact of the policy of uh, withdrawal of foreign subsidy. They are already, they, they, they are just panicked by this resolve of the people. So they have been running from pillar to post to try to connect with the people, but it's been difficult. So all that they are doing now is try to uh, operate a narrative that is completely at variance with what is obtainable uh, on the ground and what the people knew much about their situation. So the conversation uh, uh, by, by the Minister of is more or less too academical to be reconciled with the situation. And um, I think they need to, they need more uh, education to understand what we're dealing with right now on the ground. Adalong, uh, we will not forget too early that he served in the government of President Mohamed Obari in his very first term. And one of the things that we're perceiving uh, that this government is putting across to us is that the leadership of President Mohamed Obari left a huge burden on them. Literally, uh, Nigeria was almost going bankrupt. So when they talk about the leadership of Mohamed Buhari, you are part of that leadership. It appears that what they are saying and what they inherited, it appears that the government did not do well or did, did fail, literally. Is that your assessment? In your assessment, how well or badly did Mohamed Buhari do uh, as a president of Nigeria, under whose cabinet you served in the first term? Tinibu and Buhari are similar twins. The government of Mohamed Buhari was a joint government of Buhari and Tinibu. Tinibu provided the vice president and about five ministers in the cabinet for the period of eight years. He also appoint, nominated special advisors. And as one who served in the government, on many occasions, we have traveled with him together with President Wang Buari on foreign um, missions. So I think it is unfair for uh, President Tinibu to say, to, to, to now say he inherited. No, there was nothing for him to inherit. Whatever we are dealing with today uh, was what they jointly with uh, Muhammad Buari put in place. And um, from their arguments now, I am convinced that part of the uh, advice they gave Buari with those he nominated was to drive the country to this position so that they can find themselves in power and embark on blame game. But there is, there is no distinction, clear distinction at all, between Buari's ADS government and Tinubu because it, they shared the members of the government and they serve their interest in government. Are you by inference saying that the Mohamed Buhari administration failed the management of uh, failed in the management of our common resources? Completely. That I have not denied it. That self indictment I have admitted and has apologized to Nigerians. Because I'm one of those who campaigned vigorously for President Mohamed Buhari and the APC. And I had uh, uh, a, a, a vision, a dream of transforming Nigeria into a better society. So if we have not been able to achieve that in the four years of my service and the eight years of President Mohamed Buhari, I cannot place things now. That government failed, and of course some of the debt burdens that Nigeria is, de is dealing with uh, was by that tenable Buari's government, uh, which we served in. So I have not denied that uh, 
it, the government did not discharge its social contract with Nigerians. Um, Mr. Delong, I want to put up a few things. Uh, if my uh, producer can get me some of the things. The question I want to ask is, uh, some of the, they call it, there's no aggregated common charter of demands by, because there are different groups uh, coming together to protest. Uh, I don't know what group you belong to. Maybe I'll ask you, what group do you belong to? Are you a lone protester or there's a group you, you belong to or you're coming as a member of the S SDP? Uh, by uh, how are you coming on this protest as a citizen or a member of a group? Or let us be clear. Uh, currently, I, I, I lead the various uh, civil society, faith based, and community groups in the north that had, uh, are participating in the protest. So uh, it will be fair to refer to me as a leader of most of those groups that have identified with me. Would you also say, some people are alluding to the fact, especially the people in power, that this may border on anarchy, that people who have lost the election are unhappy, and this is politically motivated. Is this, in your view, who has been a politician, or who is still a politician, a former minister who served barely a few years ago, do you see this as politically motivated? You know, it's unfortunate that those in government are demarcating our image as a country. Nigerians have, so, have great brains all over the world. So if such statements are coming officially from government, I mean, it's embarrassing to some of us. The issues raised by the people are very, very clear. Hunger, poverty, unemployment, injustice, insecurity, and impunity. Can they deny any of those things? Why have they not given the attention to address these things? People are dying every day, even in just where I am. A man collapsed yesterday by the road and died. He was, his pocket was searched, and prescriptions were seen in the pocket, which he has no money to afford. And he collapsed and died. These are realities. So why are you shifting the goalposts instead of dealing with uh, the issue? So the government should kindly please stop embarrassing Nigerians. For over a decade, this has been the birthplace of innovation. Innocent Vehicles is a testament to resilience, employing international best practices to create more than just a car. Every vehicle here tells a story of durability, fuel economy and safety. Crafted with the African spirit, the Nigerian heart. These vehicles surrounding me embody the unique concept of regionalization. Each one designed to cater to the tastes and preferences of our people. From the streets in Nigeria to the terrains of the Sahara, these vehicles are designed for our roads, for our people. This is more than a vehicle. It's a symbol of our progress, our resilience, our collective success story. Your feedback drives us to continuously innovate and improve. Innocent Vehicle, the pride of African roads.